This is part 6 of Link to SQL tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to call a stored procedure with output parameters using Link to SQL. This is continuation to part 5. Please watch part 5 before proceeding. The first step here is to create the stored procedure itself. So let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. Here we've got a stored procedure with name Get Employees by Department. Notice the stored procedure has got two parameters. The first parameter is the input parameter and the second parameter is the output parameter. So what is this stored procedure going to do? The stored procedure is going to return us all the employees by department. So if we give it a department ID, then the stored procedure is going to return all the employees belonging to that department. So this is the statement. Notice that we are selecting all employees from employees table where department ID equals at department ID, whatever department ID we are passing in. And in addition to that, this stored procedure is also going to return the department name using this output parameter. So notice into this output parameter, we are selecting the name column from departments table where ID equals the passed in department ID. So let's quickly test this stored procedure. So first let's declare a variable and let's call that at DEPT name of type care. So this variable is going to receive the department name. So we want to execute this stored procedure, get employees by department. And this stored procedure has got two parameters. The first one is the input parameter where we need to pass the department ID. And the second one is the output parameter. So we need to pass a parameter here which is going to receive the department name and that is going to be at DEPT name. And since this is an output parameter, we use the out keyword. And let's select whatever value that this variable has received. So let's execute this piece of code. But before we do that, we need to create the stored procedure itself. So let's execute first the stored procedure code. And let's refresh the stored procedures folder. So there we have get employees by department. Now let's execute this piece of code. So notice we get all the employees belonging to department ID 1. And department ID 1 name is IT. So if we pass, for example, department ID 2, then we should get all the employees belonging to that department. And department ID 2 is HR department. Now let's see how to actually call this stored procedure from link to SQL. So let's flip to Visual Studio now. So the first step here is to go to the Server Explorer and then refresh this stored procedures folder. So now we have get employees by department. Now let's go to link to SQL class designer file. So at the moment we don't have that stored procedure here. So let's drag and drop this stored procedure from Server Explorer on to Link to SQL Class Designer. So it should automatically create a C sharp method for us. So we have this get employees by department. So within our code behind file, we need to call that method. But before that, let's design our web form. Let's actually drag and drop a button control onto the web form. And let's quickly change the text and ID of this button. So let's change the ID to button get employees by department. And let's also change the text on that to get employees by department. And let's double click on that to generate the click even handler. Now let's also drag and drop a label control. So within the label control, we'll display the department name. And let's change the ID of the label to LBLDEPT. And let's remove the text from that label. All right, so now let's click this button. So now we need to call the function which represents our stored procedure. So the function that represents our stored procedure is this function get employees by department. So here first we need to create an instance of our sample db context class. So sample db context, let's call this db context equals new sample db context. And here 
we are going to call this get employees by department. Now if you look at this method, notice that it has got two parameters. The first parameter is the department ID which we'll have to pass as the input parameter to the stored procedure. And look at the second parameter. This is a reference parameter and this is the parameter which is going to receive the department name that the stored procedure returns. Okay, and if you look at the return type of this method, notice what it is returning. It is returning an I single result of get employee by department result. Okay, now we can change this return type if we want to employee, uh, but we discussed that uh, you know in our previous video sessions. So I'm not going to change that now. So we need to pass the department ID. So let's pass department ID as one. And here we need to pass a parameter which is going to receive the department name. So first let's create a variable of type string. Let's call this DEPT name and let's initialize that to an empty string. And since this is a reference parameter, we need to use the ref keyword as well and then pass the parameter. So whatever this function returns, you know, we are going to set that as the data source for our grid view control. So grid view one dot data source equals that. And let's call the data bind method. And finally, within our LBL department label, let's display the department name. So let's set the text on that to department name equals whatever this variable has received. All right, with all these changes, let's run this. So get employees by department. Look at that, we get all the employees belonging to department ID one and the department name is ID. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.